Hey everyone! Okay, today we're going to be reading Opossums Don't Live in Houses and Other Alternative Facts by Sesame the Opossum. He wrote this himself. It's, it's his autobiography, but he took some artistic liberties. So, let's get started. As a baby possum, I clung to mom's back. It was me, Sesame, and my brothers named Jack. There's the picture of him on his mama's back. Early one morning when I thought I was grown, I said bye to my family and left on my own. Life seemed like a breeze until I realized I had no food, no friends, but a plan I devised. I'd find a best friend and a house to live in, a gecko, a squirrel, let the friend search begin. And here he is looking at a squirrel or a leopard gecko for a best friend. My bestie could be a raccoon white and black or a fox who would let me ride on her back. But when nighttime fell and I still had no friend, I decided to sleep and then try again. So there he is. He goes up in the tree to sleep. In the morning I was starving and in a bad mood. I went to the suburbs to find a house with some food. I knocked on the doors and at each one they cried, Possums don't live in houses. Now go, stay inside. Oh wait. <laughs> now go, stay outside. They didn't want him inside. They thought I was ugly, a nuisance, a pest, but I just wanted food, maybe a cuddle and rest. I crawled off dejected, but soon saw a fish. Hold on, I thought. She might answer my wish. I jumped in to swim. A giant mistake, because I sunk to the bottom, swallowed up by the lake. And you see his tail there? It's sticking out, because that's the only part of him that didn't sink down yet. Nothing went right. I was hitting rock bottom. No friend and no house and nothing but problems. Just when I thought my short life was done, a fuzzy orange dog pulled me into the sun. Look at his tail, it's just a big fuzzball. He carried me round for an hour or more, then we got to a house and went in the front door. With water and soap, I went into a tub. It was so nice and warm and I got a good scrub. There was plenty of laundry, perfect for sleeping, and a bucket of fruit I could munch on while swinging. See, Sesame was so hungry, so it's a good thing he got some fruit. I ate all the fruits I could fit in my tummy and a couple of houseplants, surprisingly yummy. I was at home in the house, and we even had tea. We had everything and more, my best friend and me. I thought back to when people told me as fact, possums don't live in houses. Well, that's not correct. With my friend by my side, we wrote out our tale, Possums do live in houses. Our book tells it all. Along with that fact and all of our doodles, we now present more facts to stick in your noodle. Sesame and cocoa. Noodle also means brain. So it's more facts to learn. So here are some alternative facts about possums with real facts after. Possums are rodents. Not true. We are marsupials like kangaroos and koalas. We are the only marsupial native to the United States. Possum skeletons have been found dating back 70 million years. We are like modern dinosaurs. Here's another alternative fact about possums. Possums carry rabies. Wrong. Possums are almost entirely immune to rabies. We are also immune to snake venom. Sometimes we eat snakes and sometimes they eat us. Speaking of eating, we also eat bugs. So we're good to have in your yard. And here's another alternative fact about opossums. Possums sleep upside down, hanging from their tails. That's silly. We don't really do that. But we do like sleeping on our backs with our feet up in the air. Speaking of going, quotes, belly up, we have no control over when we play dead. Playing a possum is involuntary, and it only happens when we are very scared. It makes us look dead, and we hope it makes the threat go away. And here you go, the last alternative fact about possums. Possums are mean. That's sad. We are gentle creatures who just get scared easily. We can look mean when we are threatened. We have 50 teeth, the most of any land mammal, and we are not afraid to show them, but we almost never attack, and we are good friends to have around. If you let us go about our business, We'll eat lots of bugs in your yard. The end. Well, wait, there's somewhere. My best friend and I hope we've been informative. 
Be a friend to all earthlings. Live and let live. Be nice to all animals. Be gentle and kind. Tread lightly on earth. We are all intertwined. And if you see a friend in distress, help them out. Call a wildlife expert if ever in doubt. Thank you, everyone, for coming to Sesame's Reading Time. We hope you loved his book. Now, there's a couple things to remember. Like at the end, we said call a wildlife expert because... Even though Sesame found a good house to live in, a lot of times, if a human wants to take care of a possum, they need to know some very specific things and very important things to be able to take care of possums. So it can be tough. So if you ever find one, call someone who knows what they're doing and can help the possum out. And another thing is, Coco was a very nice little dog, but sometimes even nice little dogs can hurt baby possums, especially the babies, because they're very fragile. So if you have a dog, try and make sure that your dog is inside at nighttime when possums like to play outside. And also when your dog is outside, even during the day, keep your dog on a leash and that will keep your dog safe and it will also keep wildlife safe. And if you have cats, you'll also want to make sure that your cats stay inside as well so that they're safe and the wildlife outside, birds, possums, baby raccoons, anything else can stay outside and stay safe there. And cats need a lot of exercise. So you can play with them inside. Make sure that you give them lots of things to chase. Um, and that can be some good bonding time for you guys. Okay. Well, have a wonderful day. Thanks for listening to Sesame's story. And we're sending you lots of possum kisses. Bye.